no, I think this guy's took him through a hole in his head because apparently <laughs> if you look at the languages you've got alpha bait right or alif bait in the Hebrew Aramaic or the Hebrew okay so it probably originated from there yeah. didn't originate from China or anything like that they had their own language okay it's like the corner Greek that wasn't the original language the first ever language because it's akin to the Aramaic if you translated the corner Greek the original ancient very old corner Greek into the nearest English equivalent and the uh, original ancient very old say Tav Asher Aramaic or the Galilean Aramaic New Testament into the nearest English equivalent you would find they're pretty near exact that's what it means by akin okay so somewhere along the way it's come from some other religion uh, this language has come from some other source okay it didn't like God didn't create everything and he said right Chinese language is first or the Indian language is first no because they didn't exist at that particular time the descendants of the descendants of descendants which probably goes way back to Adam and Eve and Noah okay so we, we believe he's incorrect there because in the uh, original ancient very old uh, Tav Ashrit with the Aramaic uh, Brita uh, the translation project of Victor E. Alexander a native born Aramaic speaking translator from Mesopotamia Syria he states that this was the first language the sacred scribal language that God spoke to Adam and Eve in the garden and the men at the Tower of Babel spoke one to another okay and then they decided oh okay let's uh let's uh decide on a name you know let's call ourselves something like a nation or whatever uh a name so that if we get scattered uh at least we'll have a name right so they called themselves well that their, their, their city was created so it's babylon right so they are speaking this once God confused their language and then scattered them, whatever they were speaking to each other, they were babbling. Okay, Babel, 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 right? So they hear all these different languages and they basically couldn't understand each other, so it's like babbling. Okay, so they might have called themselves because they're in the desert region of Sumer, they might have called themselves Sumerian, right? But if you have a look at the word Sumeria, it's got the end prefix on it. Okay, there's no word here that says Asia or Persia or anything like that. It's an end suffix, sorry. It's a Greek loan word. Oh, here it is. Here's India, right? Example, India. That's an end suffix, a Greek loan word, which basically means that geographical location where these people dwelt. They possess that geographical location. Okay? Say when the Greeks ventured there, invaded it, and they says, oh, "Okay, who are you? Oh, we are the descendants of, uh, say, example, Budafo. Okay, oh, okay, okay. So what's that language they're speaking? Oh, it's uh, Hindu or Indian or something, right? Indo, whatever. Okay, just an example. So they say, oh, okay." So you are the people occupying this geographical location. It doesn't yet have a name. It's just territories. Okay, so we'll put this on the end of this because you're the Indies or whatever. Right, whatever they explained to them or whatever they told them. So we'll call you India. Okay? Okay, and you're speaking a certain language. Okay, so it's Indian or it's Asian or it's Persian or something like that, right? Or it's Aramaic. So they put the yeah, Aramaic. So they put the. It's just an example. <laughs> it's a bit over the top, but so, yes, if they meet the Aramaeans, they say, "Oh, you speak the language of your forefathers. You've told us that. So we're going to put an end suffix on the end, which means basically that you possess that particular language of your forefather Aram, and you're speaking it, right? So we'll give you this language, and we call it Aramaic. Okay. So this is probably later on that these locations on maps and stuff were given the name India 
Persia, Asia, etc., etc. Okay, and the people that occupied it, that possessed that land, spoke a certain language, they were speaking Aramaic. They are speaking, are speaking um, Syriac, etc., etc. So hopefully you understand that. Okay, these are the things that people don't know. That you think, oh yeah, it was always called India. It was always called Egypt. Uh, it was always called Africa. You know, all this sort of stuff. They don't do the research. And yet they come at you and say, oh, no, you're wrong. You don't know. <laughs> According to our religion, you know, this, our text, it, it says this. This is history. Yeah. This is established fact. This is evident. It's outside those religious texts. Okay. So, you don't believe he's right here. It wasn't invented in China in 28 BC, or 2800 BC. Okay, the Chinese alphabet might have been, okay, by Fo Si, who was the first Chinese emperor to embrace that religion. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Yeah, their alphabet. Okay, so yeah, we we'll take that back. That he's not actually wrong there. If we took it out of context. Yeah, that's our fault. Apologies. Yeah, anyway, uh, so. Yao, the fourth Chinese emperor who adopted right, the same faith, published blah 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 blah. Yeah, okay, on his accession to the throne, so only you know, it goes on like that. But that, yeah, so that, sorry, that was our mistake. See, so people uh, <laughs> realize we do make mistakes. To err is human, but to forgive is divine. Old Willie Shakespeare. So if we make a mistake, we'll correct it, whether it'll be in our uh, description of our video or something we've seen, like we just showed. Okay. So what we say, we strive to live by, okay? People say, oh, they're real truth, and all this, all this sort of mumble, mumble stuff, right? <laughs> all this sort of stuff. But we have put deliberately in place, when we thought about it, we stopped and we thought about it. Took the time to stop and think, okay? Okay, we're going to use this name, the Ministry of the Real Truth, because everything else we used is uh, too long and... <laughs> Too, too much mouthful. Okay, someone else has already had this other one. Got this other one established since 2012 or something. So we can't really steal that, right? The other one's a love relationship thing. So, yeah. So we don't want people to like, go, oh, yeah, the real truth. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll click on this. Uh, we'll add this in the URL. And then end up on a love romance solving channel. Or they end up on this other church one that's teaching uh, Americanized... English Bible translations, copies of copies of copies of copies of whatever, right? So we thought, well, you know, we'll, we'll use, uh, ooh, saw this other church, Chinese church down the road, said the Truth Church, seen all that around, so, okay. And then to our mind came <laughs> the real truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Thought, oh, that's really catchy, that's really good, right? So, okay, and from our life experiences with Christians, Supposed Christian friends, churches, whatever, that came at us with deceit, deceiving tricks to try and get us to the church, to be sitting on the seats at the church, all this sort of stuff. No matter which church we went to, they always tried some sort of trick, right? They said, oh, no, no, we're not like that. And then we find they're exactly the same, right? Went to another one, no, 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 we're not like them. No, no way. But they were exactly the same, right? So having enough of this, we realized, hey, man, there's a lot of bogus going on. They're telling us this, telling us that, silly things like, Oh, we were once angels in heaven, but God kicked us out because we sinned. Uh, excuse me, but the scriptures say uh, they kicked out those devils, right? The fallen angels for rebelling. Okay, show me in the scripture. They can't. They make fun of you and all that sort of stuff because we've just exposed them, whatever, right? Okay. So prior to that, we thought, yeah, the, the real truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Bam, you know? So looking at uh, our whole thing is that we're looking at, listening to, the organized religions, the evangelists, the preachers, the supposed prophets, all this sort of stuff, the other organized religions like Judaism, Islam, and the small movements, the cults like the US Hebrew Israelites and all this sort of stuff, whatever they're saying, right? And we're looking at it and going, well, okay, is that actually true? Is that scriptural? So we go and do the research. And then we also do investigative journalism you know, to see, what's, see what these people are like behind the scenes. And we find, oh, this guy's a dirty, rotten... <laughs> this is just an example. This guy's the thief. This guy's a anti-this, he's anti-that, but he's the one practicing it. He gets caught in a hotel with a frilly ballet skirt on, you know, doing what he's 
telling his church not to do. Oh, this is a sin if you do this and all that sort of stuff, right? He's indulging in it. Or he's embezzling the funds from them. Their money, right? He's saying, give us uh, some money to plant a seed. You know, go to plant a seed. You know, start a harvest. And all this sort of stuff. If you love Israel, give us all your money. It's a sham, right? So making people aware that this is going on. You can see it for yourself, but you don't want to see it. You want to keep the blinders over your eyes because you're in that church and it's the only one, the chosen one, all that sort of stuff, right? Okay, You're blinded by it. So that's our whole mission, is to wake people up to realize, okay, this guy has just said this. He's making out that it's scriptural. He's saying it's scriptural. Okay, let's, go, let's have a look. Let's go do the research. No, nope, it's a load of baloney. Right. Okay, as an example, only someone came out of us and said, Oh, Jesus said this about uh, preserved books and stuff, right? Andrew said this, and someone else said this. So we checked it out. We found out it was a Gnostic. It's from the Gnostic Gospels, okay? Pseudepigrapha, which means that it's not been, it's non canonical, it's never been put into the Bible. The Nine Syrian Council, or whoever, said, would have said, Oh, no, no, this, this, this. That's not right. That's no, no. That's suit of picker for this. Chuck that out. Right? They keep they put that in the canon, right? And we found out that this person who had wrote this particular book, the book of Barnabas, wrote it in the Middle Ages. Okay, and he tried to attribute it to Barnabas, one of the disciples of Paul or whoever, right? Yeah, he tried to attribute it to that guy. So this guy, this person was obviously trying to catch us out on something right probably we're just using this as an example we're not saying you did okay but trying to pin us on something trying to get us on something oh well you know you can't uh use that uh original ancient very old manuscript those preserved books or whatever you said right the tab asher whatever because jesus said this jesus said that we find out he didn't okay if you do the research, you'll find the Gnostic Gospels, the lost book of Adam and all that sort of stuff, a pseudepigrapha. Somebody's obviously written it. They can't pinpoint the author, but they can pinpoint when it was actually written. Okay? If you don't believe us, you think, oh, you're a lot of baloney, go and check out Bart D. Ehrman. Strange enough, agnostic uh, atheist, can't decide if he believes in, he believes in Jesus, that Jesus was a, a person, right? He existed, right? But he's, he doesn't believe in God. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Even though his wife apparently is a Christian. So you go do the research, listen to that guy, right? And he'll tell you, pseudepigrapha. Okay, it's basically that. Someone's written it. We can't tell you exactly who it is, pinpoint who exactly it is who wrote it. But looking at the dating of it, you know, the, the quality of it, etc., etc., we are saying, well, we're assuming it's coming from the 15th century. Okay? They know what they're doing. They're the experts, you know. It's from the 15th century. It's like this Amon Hillman saying, oh, Jesus was arrested in Gethsemane, in the garden, for drug trafficking and all this sort of stuff, all this rubbish. And then this other guy on the uh, live show that was talking to him said, oh, he said this. No, no, he didn't say it's from the Bible. We checked it out. We found the transcript and found, yeah, he was. He was saying, he actually said, yeah, yeah, it's in the scriptures when it's not so what do we do we expose all of that okay if you like it you like it if you don't you don't go watch barney or something you know go outside and i don't know tie a bit of meat to your foot or something and make the dog chase you or something you know something different you know and, and, and please don't come at us with all this rubbish you know all these false accusations and all this sort of stuff i mean like all this cussing and stuff because you know we, we believe that if you're going to come at us with that, expect us to come at you with that, right? We probably won't, but, you know, there's always that possibility that, you know, if you're going to do that to somebody else, expect it to be done to you. Maybe not by us, maybe somebody else who's a heavier, nastier troll that comes at you when you make a comment, okay? Anyway, so we're going to continue with this. Okay, it goes on about the Buddha. We've basically covered um, what he claims to have read. The two manuscripts read to him by the Lama of the Hymus 
convent were compiled from diverse copies written in the Tibetan tongue, translated from rolls belonging to the Lhasa Library, and brought from India, Nepal, and Maghada 200 years after Christ. Okay, so, uh, is he saying that uh, these people were writing what Christ said to them uh, at that time? That they were pretty much old, two thousand years later, or two thousand years after Christ had died. Anybody could have written those between that time, right? Yeah. This information contained about Christ is oddly mixed, without relation or coherence with other events of that period. Okay. Without preliminary details or explanation, the manuscript begins by announcing that in the very year of the death of Christ, a few merchants just returned from Judea, having brought back the information that a just man named Isa, an Israelite, after having been twice acquitted by his judges, as, well, as was the man of God, was finally put to death at the instigation of the pagan government, the Pilate, who feared that Jesus would take advantage of his popularity to re-establish the kingdom of Israel and expel its conquerors from the land. Okay, so we would say this guy is full of it because here he's saying that these people came from Judea with this Arabic name. Right? Isa. No way would have, if they were Judeans, would have they come back with the Arabic name. And this Arabic was the prevalent language that they learned in that particular era. Okay, then we come back and say something like, uh, just an example, Ha Yeshua Mashika or something like that, right? Or even if they spoke Galilean Aramaic or Aramaic, Hebrew Aramaic, they would say Yeshua Mashika or something like that, right? Mashiach. Yeah, they wouldn't be coming to you with a <laughs> coming in and saying Isa, right? They'd be speaking their own language and stating his name in their language through their language so yeah this guy yeah I don't know then comes the somewhat incoherent tale of Jesus preaching among the Gubas and other pagans evidently written in the year following the death of Christ in whom there is a growing interest and one of the merchants relates what is known of the origin of Jesus and of his family etc etc ok so again we can expose this guy saying baloney this guy's talking baloney because supposedly Jesus wrote what well, he got a letter from uh, Agba of Edessa known as the black he had some sort of disease him and his son and he wanted Jesus to come and heal him him and his son and he says you know my kingdom's big there's plenty of room here you can come and stay here in all perfect safety or whatever right but he said no no in a letter taken back to him or written to him, whatever I can't because I'm about my father's business. And, you know, as far as business is to tell men about God, etc., etc., salvation, grace, all this sort of stuff, and then die on the cross. Yeah? Be crucified, suffer for sinners, uh, be in a tomb for three days, uh, and then rise again and then ascend to the kingdom of heaven and sit at the right hand side of his father, according to the scriptures, right? So he's too busy, right? He's, he's trying to do that will of God. So he says, well, you know, um, well, the father, he says, but, you know, what I'll do is I'll um, send one of my disciples to you, one of my apostles to you, and you shall be healed to this letter, okay, or from what he tells you, whatever, right, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so apparently one of these disciples took that face cover of when he was wrapped up, you know, uh, to this king who then treated it, probably was healed by it. Not too sure on the story there. So either the letter or what this... Apostle said to him, um, or oh, that face cover, right? And he kept it, and apparently, the country was later invaded and somebody stole it. We don't think it's the Shroud of Turin because it's just a small piece, apparently, right? It's just the face cover part. We don't believe that it was the complete Turin, like it was said, uh, information that we found. Oh, yeah, they stole it, that whole uh, linen wrapping, etc. And that's what's ended up in Turin, you know, the shot of Turin, all that sort of stuff. 
Okay, so yeah, this guy, yeah, we don't think he's the real deal. Okay, we can't say, well, he's made it all up. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There must be some, well, probably not, but some exporters from that particular place where he claimed that it was. Uh, it is, all these writings, etc., etc., that you know, could come out. Somebody find a video of it. Person from there finally says, you know, it's here, all these writings, like he said, it's here, here's the evidence, or nah, total baloney, right? He was dreaming it up. There's many people in uh, this information here that we found on him that say, nah, he's bogus, he made it all up. Even the llamas of the time said, nah, it's all forgery, allegations of forgery and then he confessed he made it up or something he made a lot of money out of it a virtual nobody he got famous made a lot of money out of it pulling a sham and all this sort of stuff then other people try to jump on board and say no no it's all true I went there and a llama showed me and told me and all this sort of stuff and then others say no no load of rubbish it's all there okay all you have to do is go to it and read it to know it simple as okay so if you enjoyed this video though rather long we might chop it into smaller parts so it makes it more uh makes it more easier for you to hear it and understand it uh than one big two hour chunky video if you liked it then uh you know what to do click on the like button and subscribe to our channel and then add your comments below in the comment section that's below the video and then go share it this video with all your family friends and others and you pay us some money to plant a seed so we can start a harvest nah just joking okay so yeah basically if you like this video click on it subscribe to our channel add your comments below and you go share it for your family, friends, uh, your neighbours, strangers, cat, dog, bird, politicians, and so forth. Thank you for taking the time to watch this uh, really long video.